as freedoms continued to decline globally for the 17th consecutive year in 2022, U.S. nonprofit Freedom House noted a positive trend. Everyday citizens are demanding that their political and civil rights be preserved. We continue to see that around the world in the most repressive environments. We see that in China, we see that in Cuba, we saw that in Iran last year. Gorochovska says that inadequate protections, intimidation and even violence against journalists has left media freedom at risk in at least 157 countries and territories. They inform citizens, they hold the powerful to account. So this is all really necessary for a healthy democracy. She added that Russian censorship was particularly damaging when it came to reporting the war in Ukraine. You couldn't call the war a war. You couldn't criticize the Russian military. And so as a result, most Russian independent media uh, left the country and has to be based elsewhere. The repression has also discouraged ordinary citizens from seeking access to reliable sources of information, even through a VPN, for instance, says Sinia Kirilova, an investigative journalist and analyst at the Jamestown Foundation. If you just share any truthful information about the war, you can be arrested and uh, can be put in jail. The Freedom in the World report, now in its 50th year, also highlighted declines in Burkina Faso and Myanmar. We actually have seen people put to death in Myanmar for, for offering criticism of the coup and of the ruling uh, military junta. We're really seeing an unfortunate situation in Burkina Faso because it, it means um, sort of a, a, almost a complete um, destruction of uh, political institutions and people's rights. She noted that's a sharp contrast to Colombia and Lesotho, which are among the 34 countries to show improvements. One aspect of sort of the bright spots we see are elections that are competitive and free. The United States also has work to do in terms of combating polarization, something Gorochowska called warring. But we also see efforts um, from both political parties to address that. Amid a global struggle for democracy, Freedom House recommends governments make human rights a priority, including in bilateral engagements. Veronica Valderas Iglesias, VOA News, Washington.